In this tutorial, we'll be creating this carved or engraved text onto any 3D model using After Effects. In the latest Deadpool movie, there's actually a scene in the intro where a bone of a hand comes in and some of the credits are sort of engraved onto it. And one of the subscribers requested a tutorial about it. I figured it's a cool idea, so let's do something similar. So in order to create this, we're gonna be using Element 3D. So I'll create a new solid for my background and a new solid for Element. and we'll also create a camera. So for this tutorial, I'm gonna be using this stick model here instead of a bone, which is from Sketchfab that has a bunch of 3D models you can use, such as this one. Now, this model comes in an FBX format, which is something that Element cannot read. So if you get Cinema 4D, for example, you can import the model onto there and simply save it as a file and Element can read that. But if you don't, you can use something like Blender and simply go into File, Import, FBX, select the 3D model and import it. So now we got it here in Blender and I'll go into File, Export and export it as an OBJ. So now let's add element to this layer here. And once we go into the scene setup, we can import the 3D model we exported from Blender. Sometimes the model that you import will appear very small. So a quick fix is click on Normalize Size here. And there we have it. Let's click OK. And I'm gonna quickly scale this up here and maybe move it a bit closer to the camera, like so. And now let's work on the carving of the text or a logo onto this 3D object. So this comes with textures such as this one, and I'm gonna import it into a new composition here. So this is basically the texture unfolded, and I'm gonna create a text here. Let's type in tutorial. And I don't know where to place it right now, so I'll just leave it at here and go back into my main composition, drop the comp below here, we can go ahead and hide it. And if I go into my element, under costume layers, I can import it as a texture map here. So I'll select it under layer one. Now, once I go back into my scene setup, under my diffuse channel, I can actually select costume layer one. And now I see the composition on my 3D model. So this makes things easier to align the text on the model. So I can go back into here and move it over here. Maybe give it some rotation to align with the texture here a bit more. And once I go back, you can see we moved it closer to the center, maybe move it a bit more here. Okay, this is good enough. Now let's just go back here quickly and I'll select my text layer, right click layer styles and select inner shadow. So this just makes it look like it's curved inside kind of. And we can also add rough edges. Let's scale down the scale here and maybe change it to cut and just give it a bit of roughness on the edges here so it doesn't look too smooth and this will be good enough. So now we've got the text on our 3D model here which we can start animating but it doesn't really look like it's curved into it and doesn't really look realistic. So in order to make it look like it's actually part of the model we need a normal map. Most 3D models just like this one comes with a normal map which looks like this. Now the only problem here is we don't have the text as a part of our model. Now maybe you don't even have a normal map so I'll show you how to create one. So we'll go back into the main composition of our texture and we need to export this image onto Photoshop. So we'll select it, go into composition, save frame as and export a JPEG or if you're using FX console simply go onto here and save to JPEG. Let's move on to Photoshop and create a normal map. So the only problem with Photoshop is the latest versions don't actually support the 3D feature that created these maps. And sadly, I had to downgrade it to a version that does. I believe 25.1 is the latest that supports it. But if you don't want to mess with the versions or you don't even have Photoshop, what you can simply do is Google Normal Map Generator. And there is a website that does this in a similar way. But let's go ahead and create this over here. So we'll go into Filter, 3D and select Generate Normal Map. Now this could get a little bit heavy here, but it basically creates a normal map for our texture here. I might increase the detail scale here, maybe to 120, just so we can get a bit more detail around our text. And let's hit OK. So this is our normal pass and we can go ahead and export it. So I'll select file, export and export it as a PNG. Once we've got our normal texture created, we can go back into element and import it. So I'll go into my scene setup and here under normal map, I will import the texture we just created. And once we zoom in here, you can see our text is actually sort of extruded in 3D space. 
Now by default, it's gonna be extruding outwards from our model. So to make this look like it's curved into the model, we'll set this to minus 100 or minus whatever you need to. And this makes it look like it's going inside of the 3D model. So if I disable the texture here, you can see that it's sort of part of the 3D model here. So for example, if I copy the normal map here, I can go ahead and set a metal texture here and paste the normal map and it's gonna be part of the model. So you can have this however you want to. I'm just gonna have it on my original texture like so. And let's hit okay. Now, since we already created the normal map, we can go back into this composition and maybe change the color of the text here. So I'll select this area and maybe set the opacity to 50. It updates automatically and it looks like it's part of the 3D model. Now let's just go ahead and recreate the animation that you've seen in the beginning. So in order to do this, I'm gonna go back into element and I'll select my stick, right click, go to auxiliary channel and set it to channel one. And I'll explain what that does in a bit. Let's go to about here and I'll set a keyframe for the position, the X rotation, hit U to bring these up and we'll go to the first frame. Let's give it a bit of a spinning animation here and we'll move it off camera. So it basically comes in and let's go to about three seconds, set a keyframe and let's have it animate out. So more spinning and goes off frame. So comes in and away. Now let's go into my camera here and I'll select R to bring up the rotation. I'll set a keyframe for my Y rotation here and let's go to the first frame and we can actually rotate the camera like so. Maybe move it farther back so it comes in quicker. And we'll set a keyframe here as well. Go to the end and have it follow the stick just a bit more and have it fly away just a bit further. And let's just ease the keyframe. So select them all, hit F9 and let's go into the graph to create something quick and basic like this. So it comes in quick and gradually leaves the frame. All right, so let me show you a couple of tricks on how I make this thing look continuous so it doesn't just stand still once it's there and you don't have to mess with the camera too much. So I'll create a new null object and we'll make it 3D. I will attach my camera to the null object. Let's hit P to bring up the position. Set a keyframe here and place it about here. And we'll move over here and we're just going to animate the Z position slowly zooming in and this keyframe can go somewhere around here. So now once the camera stops, it's slowly zooming in, creating some sort of movement. So if you remember, we set the model to be on auxiliary channel one, and let me show you why and what that does. So if I go into aux channels here under group one, channel one, we basically got controls for our position, scale and rotation, not including the main controls over here. So maybe if I move the stick a bit to the right, I'll give it some rotation on the X like so, and I'll set a keyframe for the X rotation and the X position. Let's hit U to bring these up. And over time, we can have it maybe go to the left and the rotation to minus nine. Let's move these two to be between these keyframes and these two to be between these ones. So now once I play this through, we can see we have some continuous movement of the rotation and the position of our 3D model. And this is not overcomplicating the camera, so it's pretty easy to make and control. Now, one more thing I like to add is if I hit A on my camera, I'll click the stopwatch, I can type in wiggle, open bracket, let's type in 0 0.5 and comma 10. And what that does is creates a shake in 3D space on our camera. So as you can see, it's not just zooming in, we've got this slight movement of the camera, which gives us a nice touch. And now let's start stylizing this just a bit here. So I'll create a new light, make it parallel. Let's hit okay and maybe move it back in here, up here and to the right, like so. And we'll go into the element layer. We'll scroll down to render settings and let's give it some ambient inclusion so you can see that once we turn on the ambient occlusion here, if I set this to five, we're actually getting shadows on our crave text as well. So this is pretty cool. Let's set it back to two because we don't want too much of it. And we'll go into the lightning here and maybe set it to cinema. Okay. 
and I'd like to add motion blur to give it this nice look once it's coming in. And let me show you how I can quickly add an environment here, just like you've seen in the beginning of this video. So this is a website I like to use, which is called Polyheaven. And it has a bunch of these HDRI images, which you can use for your project, which is completely free. So once I've got one of these images, I'm going to go into element. Let's go into the scene setup. And under my environment, I'll just select the image it gives me and hit OK. Now you can go into custom layers here and under physical environment, make it show in the background just like that. But what I like to do is actually duplicate the element layer. Let me call this one environment and I'll disable group one here. We'll go back down here and set it to show in background. So we've got a single layer with just the background here. And if we go into rotate environment here, we can rotate around the image. And let me just set it to an interesting point, maybe here. Now, instead of using depth of field, which will make our project much heavier, I can just add a camera lens blur onto this layer. Let me set it to 20 and I can enable back the main element layer and we'll follow along with the camera and the motion blur. And one more thing here, let's bring up the keyframes from the camera and the environment. And I'll just set a keyframe for my blur radius. So here it's going to be set to 20. Here it's going to be maybe five. Let's bring these up and we'll copy these keyframes onto here. Select them, hit F9, so we just have it blur over time, like so. Alright, this is it for this tutorial. I hope you found this useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.